Hello, and welcome to Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel. I am Barbara Tuckett, the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel. I am a wellness travel specialist. I believe that our mind, our body, and our spirit all play into our well being. And I create travel experiences which improve wellness so that you return from your vacation with more health, more happiness, and more connection. This is being recorded as a YouTube video and a podcast. This is episode number 14. The title is Flights, the best time to book, and the best travel credit cards. So I am happy to welcome you here today. Um, it just seems like a while since we've been together. Um, the fact that I record this every two weeks kind of makes it so that it seems like a while, especially with Christmas in between and everything. At time of recording this, it is um, the end of the year. Christmas is over. New Year's is uh, right around the corner. And um, here we are getting ready for 2021. So I am kind of excited to talk about today's topic. I am going to share my screen for those of you who are um, watching the video. And let's see. We can get it going here. Sharing, sharing, and I always kind of have a little bit of techno stuff, little a little techno challenge going on while I'm getting my screen shared. I don't know why, but anyway, excited to talk about today's topic um, about all about flights and airlines and all of that stuff. So. Um, just briefly to start off with, we are saying goodbye to 2020 and we are saying hello to 2021 and it's really a good feeling. I don't know about you, but I am done. I am so done with 2020. I <laughs> think we all are. Everybody in the whole world, isn't it amazing that something like a pandemic just completely unites us all in, oh, we're just whew, glad to put off 2020 and whatever 2021 brings we're hoping it's better than last year. So um, one thing that we are doing in our family, uh, I myself am doing it and having my family do it too, to kind of say goodbye to 2020, um, we are writing down the top 10 blessings or the top 10 good things from the year 2020. Um, might be a little challenging, but that's part of why we're doing it. Then to continue that goodness, and to anticipate 2021, we are writing down 10 anticipated happinesses, that's probably not even a word, or blessings that we hope will be coming in 2021. So that is kind of our way to celebrate um, the end of 2020 and be able to kind of end it on a, a good note rather than negative and be able to welcome in 2021. So just a tip, you might want to do that in your own self or with your own family um, for something you might want to do. So let's dive in. The very most often asked question that travel advisors get is, when is the best time to book flights? Everybody always wants to know, should I wait? Should I book now? Um, how long out? How far in advance should I book? my flights. And so that is something we are going to discuss today. The other question that I am going to talk about is which are the best credit cards that will benefit your travel? And that's kind of a fun insider thing to know about as well, because there's lots of ways that you can help add up your travel points and miles and things like that. So um, you might ask, since I am a wellness travel specialist, what in the world does this have to do with wellness? Um, it might be an interesting topic, but how does this even relate to wellness? It does, let me tell you, it does have a lot to do with wellness. First of all, the peace of mind that you are able to plan a vacation with some of this knowledge that you are going to get today. And second of all, once you plan that vacation, the anticipation that you will have. Anticipation brings increased serotonin, which is the happiness hormone that we have in our bodies. So we have more peace of mind and more happiness when we 
have more knowledge and more ability, better ability to book our vacations. So let's talk about flights. First of all, when is the best time to buy airline tickets? Well, it's complicated. That probably doesn't surprise you to know that. Um, the airlines use very sophisticated systems and algorithms to study the historical evidence on the flight, flight routes, and then they use that to predict and adjust the fares. Um, they have very complex algorithms and they determine how fast the seats are selling, they predict how quickly they'll continue to sell, and then they change the prices, sometimes from minute to minute, um, as we all probably have experienced that that the price is no longer there when you go back just a few minutes later. Um, the result is that there really is, no matter what anybody tells you, no surefire way to predict bottom line absolutely when to buy your flights, when to purchase those flights. There is, there isn't, it's just, it just doesn't exist. But um, in spite of that, I am happy to share my observations, my experience and what I, have learned about when you should buy airline tickets. So there are some good pointers that I have. Um, first of all, if you have ever gotten on and checked flights and checked flights and checked flights and checked flights because you just need to know when to book those, um, if you use the same trip checking website often, like if you go on one of the popular websites to check flights, and you use the same one over and over again, um, make sure that you clear the cookies on your computer here and there um, if you are searching for the same thing for multiple days in a row. Because some websites start to buy, oh, sorry, sorry. They start to bury the lower fares if you are repeatedly searching for the same thing. And you may have noticed that, that one time you go on and look, and then the next day you go on and look and that fare is completely gone. It might be because the website um, has the croak call built in that it buries those lower fares and doesn't show you those the next time you go back. So um, make sure you clear your cookies every so often. Um, also, some people use the seat map on the flight to judge how full a plane is. So they might go in and look at the seat map and think, oh, there's plenty of seats available. It looks like there's lots of availability. I don't need to buy my ticket yet because it should stay the same for a while. Um, however, what you need to remember is that some people don't pay for their seat assignments up front. So they may have already purchased um, the flight, but not they haven't had a seat assignment. So that is not taken yet. Also, another thing that happens constantly is that airlines block many of the seats um, to leave them for the airport check-in. So the best rule of thumb is don't use the seat map on a particular flight to judge how full that is because that's really not going to give you your best indication. Um, also, one other thing to be aware of, if you see some really great low cost flights, this amazing deal. Just know, sometimes it is real, sometimes it is available, um, and you can go ahead and book it. Sometimes that really amazing deal is on a really basic economy fare, a low cost airline with an economy fare. And it doesn't necessarily include like any of your carry-ons, it doesn't include a seat assignment, it doesn't include the ability to change or modify anything once you have booked. So be sure that you read the fine print because it sometimes happens that by the time you add on your bags and your seats and just to walk onto the plane, um, the cost may end up higher than those other fares that included more perks up front. I had some clients recently that they wanted to book on a low cost airline with just the lowest absolute rock bottom prices on their flights and I made sure I told them now you know um, this these particular flights they don't allow any um, they're not including any of your even your carry-ons like you can't even bring anything as a carry-on and they will charge you for a carry-on they'll charge you for your check bags of course they will charge you just to have a seat to assign you a seat on the plane so I warned them all up front of all of the extras that were being added on 
And they still came back from their trip and they said, we will never fly on that airline again because um, even though they knew that that was coming when they actually had to go through all of those steps and pay for carry-ons every time they changed planes and for both the outbound and the return flight, by the time they paid for their seats, every time they turned around, it just was such a hassle that they just ended up hating it. And they said, we're not going to fly on that airline again, ever. And so they, it really left a poor taste in their mouth. Um, so just be aware. It's totally great if you're fine with all of that and you know what the upfront costs might be. But if you do find a really super low flight deal, um, just know to read the fine print and check on everything that isn't included. All right, so here's the bottom line. This is my advice to get the best fares. Here we go. Um, first thing is travel during the slower periods, the slower travel periods of times of year, like not around holidays, for example. Um, January and May are typically really good times to travel other than avoid the Martin Luther King weekend because that generally um, always has a little bit higher prices. But if you can avoid the holidays, if you can travel at times when typically People who have kids aren't traveling, you know, not the, not the peak travel season, then you're going to get lower flights. Um, another suggestion, fares usually have the most adjustment between 90 and 120 days prior to traveling. So that's three to four months before you travel. This can be really good or it can also be bad, just depending on what your flight is doing. It can be good because if the flight hasn't sold typically as well as it normally does, then the, the flight prices could be lower. It also could be bad because if the flights are selling really well, then the airline is going to jump up that cost um, between three to four months ahead of the schedule. That is kind of the, um, the prime window for when that happens. Another tip, some people say, you may have heard that certain days of the week are best for finding low fares. Like always book on a Tuesday or always book on a Thursday. I have heard this from a handful of clients. Um, I've heard that you should always book on such and such a day. This, my friends, is a myth. Not true. Not true. Airfares are constantly adjusting. The flights do not all go down on a Tuesday or on a Thursday. You can get low fares any day of the week and any time of day. So just know that that rule of thumb, oh, everybody book on a Tuesday, um, if that starts to happen and if everybody believes to book on a Tuesday, then in actuality what's going to happen is the fares will be higher on Tuesdays because everybody's online booking right then. So it, it really is a myth that there is a particular day of the week that is always the best to find a low flight. Um, another tip. It is true, however, that flying on certain days of the week are often less expensive than others. So if you can fly on Tuesdays or Wednesdays or Saturdays, you often get a better deal than the other days of the week, partially because business travelers normally are not traveling on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Saturday. That is not a high travel time for them. So it tends to help people who are flying. Um, with holiday travel, just book as early as you possibly can, as early as you possibly can for holidays. You are not the only one who wants to get away during the holidays, I promise. So if you think that all of a sudden you last minute, two months before Christmas, you think, oh, we should go somewhere, just know that you could have gotten a much better deal if 10 months before Christmas you had, you had um, booked those same flights much, much better. Holidays are not low cost and they also um, don't ever have better prices the, the closer we get to the holiday. So just know that the further out you can book, the better off you are. This year with COVID was a an exception to that rule, but it is the only exception that I have ever, ever seen. I did have a few people that booked late in the year. They booked in November and even December um, for late December Christmas traveling, and they got decent prices. So 
not, not the best, but they got decent ones just because there's so many people that aren't traveling right now. But this year was completely the exception and I do not see that um, trend repeating itself, you know, unless something like this happens again. So look really early for holidays, as early as you possibly can. Um, another thing, airlines often include price hikes, 21 days, seven days, and three days prior to travel. So that's a really, really common thing. If you are waiting to book till the last minute because you think, oh, all of a sudden that fare is going to cut in half, that just rarely, so rarely happens. It just is not worth waiting around for unless you you don't really care if you go or not. Like if it's not a big deal, then sure, wait around and see if by some miracle your flight costs less within 21 or fewer days, then that's, that's totally fine. Like I said, this year um, was a complete opposite um, turnaround from that. People have been able to book within really short windows of traveling this year, but that was a complete exception. For international travel, if you are wondering about that, the sweet spot is often, most often, six to nine months prior to travel. So, for example, if you know right now it's, you know, the end of December, and if you know that you want to go somewhere, um, especially for spring break, wow, you, you better get on that, because I'm seeing a lot of um, flights booking up. Um, if you know you want to go somewhere in the summer or wait till later in the year um, to book, now would be a fabulous time to do that, especially especially because of COVID and there are a lot of really um, uncertain travelers right now and people who normally would have booked haven't yet. And so I would completely recommend get it booked now. Um, it, if you are traveling, obviously, like I said earlier, close to a holiday, or if you're doing something like going to Europe in the summertime, nine to 11 months is usually much, much better rates, much lower fares than um, closer in. And it's because everyone else hasn't thought about that yet. So you're kind of getting a jump on the, the better fares. So that is kind of a synopsis of my advice for getting the best flights. Now let's move on to the second topic. And that is what credit cards are best to earn travel points. So you have to know that I am not an expert at all of these cards. Um, but just know that these are typically the ones that time after time have proven their absolute worth for travel benefits, that they are just the best, the best of the best. Um, the first rule of thumb, and I'm going to talk about this a lot more in detail as we get on, get into this, but if you fly a particular airline most often, then get their credit card. Absolutely. If you really love to fly a particular airline, just get their credit card because it will be so worth it. Um, just one perk, if you hate paying for checked bags, often having their credit card, not 100%, but most of the time having their credit card is the best way to avoid paying for checked bags. Um, myself, I have a Delta Sky Miles American Express, which we'll get into. But I've got that one because I live in Salt Lake City, which is a Delta hub. And so we have tons of Delta flights out of Salt Lake City. Um, I do have a yearly fee with my Sky Miles MX. But if I fly at least once a year on Delta, it more than pays for itself with checked bags. And it includes my checked bags and also anybody that I'm traveling with. So it's really fabulous. It's really great. Um, I don't know if you listen to my podcast from a couple of weeks ago um, and it was the one about bucket list traveling and I mentioned that my husband and um, Brad they were flying home from Alaska and they had to ship all of this frozen fish home that they had caught the way that they shipped that fish home really really completely inexpensively was because my husband has the American Express that goes with Delta, um, they were able to, they, they had a, they used their luggage as 
carry-ons. So they didn't have huge bags. They just had carry-on sized luggage on their way home. And they used their packages of fish as their checked luggage. So the packages of fish all came in the plane as their checked luggage and they were able to have a carry-on free in addition to that. They ended up between the four of them, they each had a box of fish and they were able to check that. And then there was only one additional frozen box of fish that they had to pay for. So it was super, super inexpensive. Oh, it was just the best way to go ever. So that is a tip. If you fly on a certain airline more than others, definitely get their credit card. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna talk about the Delta Sky Miles American Express a little bit more. Um, sorry, my dog is barking. Hopefully she, sorry, it's not a she. My Jackson is a he, and hopefully he doesn't keep barking. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna go through a few perks for each of the airline credit cards. This is not a comprehensive list. And just because I say one thing about one of them doesn't mean that, because I didn't mention that for a different airline, that that isn't also true of that one, if that makes sense. Um, for example, the, the Delta American Express card doesn't cost anything for the first year. And there are other credit cards that don't cost for the first year also, but I may or may not mention that with their, those cards. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Another perk with the Delta card, you earn 35,000 miles after only spending $1,000 in the first three months. When you spend $10,000 in one calendar year, you receive a $100 Delta flight credit. So it's just a free credit for $100 that you get for flying Delta. Um, you also earn two miles for every dollar on Delta purchases. So anything that has to do with Delta, also at restaurants and at supermarkets. And then you earn one mile per dollar spent on other purchases. So everything you buy earns you um, your credit card points or your miles. And your first check bag is free like I was just talking about. So those are some great perks for Delta. The Alaskan Airlines has a Visa Signature Card. These are some of their perks. Um, right for signing up, you get $100 statement credit, and then you get 40,000 miles and a companion fare from $121 after you spend just $2,000 in the first three months. So you spend your $2,000 on the card and you get all of those perks. You also are um, allotted a free checked bag on Alaska. And then also each year you get a companion fare for $121. So that's a, a pretty amazing perk. You earn three miles for every dollar spent at Alaska Airlines. So anything through Alaska Airlines and then one mile on all of your other purchases. And you can redeem your miles with no blackout dates. So that's kind of great. United. The United card is called the United Explorer card. They also, like Delta, have a $0 um, fee for the first year. And you earn 60,000 miles um, in the first three months after you spend $3,000 on the card. You earn two miles per dollar spent at restaurants and hotels, obviously United purchases, and then also delivery services. For example, if you do DoorDash or Uber Eats or things like that, um, you can earn two miles per dollar spent on, on those types of things. And then one mile per dollar spent on everything else. You also, this is kind of a cool thing with the United card, you receive up to $100 that goes toward a credit, that goes toward global entry or TSA pre-check credit um, every four years. So that's amazing and your first checked bag is free. Southwest, if you fly Southwest a lot, now Southwest is pretty great because they automatically, they never have gotten rid of free checked bags. So every person who flies on Southwest is allowed two free checked bags. So you don't have to pay for your checked bags. 
Um, in addition, with their credit card, you earn up to 80,000 points when you spend $2,000 in the first three months. And there's different stipulations for it. You may not get the full 80,000 points. It just depends on how you spend it. Um, but you also, if you can spend $10,000 on the card in the first nine months that you have it, you can earn up to $50,000 and then $30,000 more um, for spending just the $10,000. You earn five points for every dollar spent on Southwest or rapid rewards like the hotel and travel partners that, that are partners with Southwest. And then you earn one point per dollar on all of the other purchases. Every year, if you qualify, then you earn a $75 Southwest travel credit. So if you are a Southwest flyer, this is a great program. It like adds up stuff really quick. Okay, let's move on to JetBlue. JetBlue doesn't have as many destinations that they fly, but this really is a great card to get if, if JetBlue is um, an airline that flies to your cities or places where you like to go. Um, with JetBlue, you earn 40,000 points after spending just $1,000 in the first three months. You earn six points per dollar, so that is the highest um, that I've talked about spent on JetBlue purchases. So that's pretty good. Then restaurants and grocery stores, you get two points per dollar and all other purchases, you get one point per dollar. There are no blackout dates or expiration on the miles that you earn through the JetBlue card. And every year on your card anniversary, you earn 5,000 bonus points. So that's also a great one to have. Um, last one is American Airlines. The American Airlines card is called the City Advantage Platinum Select World Elite MasterCard. That is a mouthful, but here are the perks. It's also zero dollars for the first year, like a couple of the others. Um, in the first three months, if you spend $2,500 on the card, then you earn 50,000 miles. You also earn two miles per dollar spent at gas stations, restaurants, and American Airlines purchases. You get a $125 flight discount after you spend $20,000 and renew your card. So you can't get, you are not eligible for that flight discount um, within the first year because you have to renew your card and then spend $20,000. Um, your first checked bag is free on domestic flights with this card. So that is kind of a rundown of different airlines credit cards. However, let's say that you just kind of fly whatever airline is the best one for where you're going and you're not too worried about adding up miles just on a, one certain airline, which that applies to a lot of people. So if that is you, then the next um, three cards that I am going to talk about will um, possibly be for you. Um, the first one is called the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card. Um, just a few highlights about this one. This one is the very best card for transferable points. So if you want to transfer your points to other travelers, other family members or friends or whoever, um, this one is very easy for that. They give a sign-up bonus worth $750 toward your travel, and you earn two points on travel and dining out, and one point on other purchases. It can be transferred one-to-one, -one, um, so dollar per dollar, mile per mile, um, for airlines, for hotels, and for other travel partners. So it has a really, really good transfer ratio. And you earn 60,000 points when you spend $4,000 on the card in the first three months. So it's really, really a great way to go if you're not tied to just one airline. Another one, card number two that I want to talk about is called the Capital One Venture Rewards Credit Card. And this one is the best for airline flexibility, for covering the cost of any flight, any airline, any time. So if you really want a lot of flexibility with your airlines and your flights, um, you might wanna look at this one. This one also has flexibility to transfer your miles to multiple travel partners. 
so you don't have to spend them all yourself. You earn 60,000 miles when you spend $3,000 in the first three months. And this one also has the perk of adding two miles for every dollar spent on every purchase. So they don't differentiate between the type of purchase that it is. You would just get two miles per every dollar spent. So that's a really great one too. All right, the third and final that I wanna tell you about is called the Chase Freedom Flex card. And this one, so pretty much every other card that I have just been talking about has an annual fee. This one, however, has zero annual fee. So there is nothing, you pay nothing to have this card. So that is in and of itself, it's a great perk. On this one, you earn bonus rewards for travel, grocery, restaurant purchases. You can earn a $200 bonus after spending $500 within the first three months. So that's a good deal. You spend 500 bucks on this card and you get a $200 bonus. Um, this one does cash back. So they do 5% cash back on groceries, um, not including Target or Walmart, unfortunately, but of other grocery stores, up to $12,000 in the first year. You get 5% cash back on other bonus categories. Um, and in those categories, you can spend up to $1,500. And you earn 5% cash back on travel purchased through Chase. 3% on dining and drug stores, and 1% on other purchases. So it's, it's pretty great, it's a pretty great option as well. If you want a card that has no annual fee, this would probably be the best one. This would be fabulous. So, oh, are you feeling it? Are you feeling like flying? Do you wanna just go somewhere? Yeah, me too. I am so getting ready to fly somewhere. Um, and I hope this has been a little bit helpful in clarifying kind of how far out to book travel and my recommendations on that. And then also, if you are interested in getting a credit card to help you earn miles, um, now hopefully you know a little bit more. So it wasn't comprehensive, but at least I gave you a kind of a well-rounded education. I will include in the show notes from the podcast, I will include... Um, some like notes from this information that I've shared. So you didn't have to worry about like taking notes on everything. So if you want to refer back to that, you totally can. I would love to connect with you. If you want to come to connect with me on Facebook or Instagram, I'm at Sweet Dreams Travel. And at Twitter, I'm at Sweet Dreams Trav. I just didn't include the E-L at the end of travel because it just was getting a little long. And um, on these, I just have to say there is so much, like I am posting on some of these topics that I talk about, but also a whole bunch of other things um, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So it, there's, there's not just this content, but a lot of other content as well that's always going on. If you are a Pinterest person, come find Sweet Dreams Travel because I, post some pretty great things there too. Post, is that the right word for Pinterest? I pin, I pin, that's the right word. Some great things on Pinterest. Um, obviously, if you have found me here, you are either listening to the podcast or watching my YouTube video. So if you want to do the other, um, you can listen to the podcast. It's called Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel, or you can watch me on YouTube, which is fun also because I always have visuals that go along with every presentation. And so that might, if you're a visual person, you may want to, you know, hook up with my YouTube channel and watch a video or two. Um, I also am super excited because I am just, I am now on Pandora. It has been just about a week or so that I got the confirmation letter that I'm on Pandora. So I kind of feel like I've arrived a little bit. Um, I applied months ago when I first started the podcast and I'm really actually excited because this is episode number 14. It's the end of 2020. Um, I broadcast every two weeks. And so that means that I've got, you know, I've been here for quite a while now. 
and um, it's it's really exciting. So please um, follow me. Please share me with other people who may enjoy learning about travel and wellness, and this might be a great place for them to come. So um, thanks for joining me, and I have really loved being here with you today. Happy, happy end of end of 2020 and oh, happy 2021. I'm just, we'll see you in a couple of weeks um, on the next episode. And by then we'll be a couple of weeks into 2021 and I'm excited to get there. I'm sure you are too. Thanks for being here with me today. Bye-bye.